On the street in front of the shopping center, a big and tall guy was beating a smaller boy. He called him by name Zhang Kian and charged another blow to the guy's face, told him to do a favor and die. The blow to the face turned out to be so strong that the main character fell to the asphalt and flew off another couple of meters. When he got up a little, he looked at his abuser and asked him how it was possible to beat people so casually. Such a question angered the bully and he grinned and said that the guy still got off easily with a beating because he calls his girlfriend Yun Yun every day and harasses her. At this moment, Na Yun, a young, fragile girl who was standing next to the bully, intervened in the conversation and added that the main character just needed to be beaten. Then she hugged the bully and smilingly said that the young man had been courting the girl for a whole year, but the most expensive food they had ever eaten was only fast food. The girl also added that the main character will never even be able to buy her the latest iPhone model, so Zhang should hurry up and get out of here. Then the young man replied to Yun Yun that he had already bought her the same phone, but it had been stolen. The girl did not believe the guy, which was expected, and told him to stop making things up, because he is a poor peasant and cannot even compare with her Yun Yun family. After that, the girl and the bully went to his car in an embrace. The man looked at his girlfriend and told her not to worry about Zhang, but rather said that she still wanted to, because later they would go to his bed together and he would fool around with her a little. In response, the girl laughed and jokingly said that Brother Meng is very mean. At this time, the main character remained on earth. He was on his knees and crying, thinking that he would be good for others only if he had money. This annoyed the guy and he began to hit the asphalt with hatred. After a while, the main character found himself in a bar. He got drunk to pieces and suffered for the same girl. The guy even thought about the fact that in fact all girls are chasing money and it's not even uncommon. So Zhang must have been blind to fall in love with Yun Yun and he should have been more restrained not to do it. At that moment, some guy turned to the main character and told him to calm his anger and stop drinking so much. Then another visitor asked the guy about what happened to the main character and was told that Zhang was abandoned by the girl he had been chasing for a year. Moreover, despite the fact that the man who was next to the girl had a large wallet, she still ran and gave Zhang a chance by deceiving him, and the main character still did not calm down. The guy also added that if he meets this couple on the street again, he will beat them very hard in order to help Zhang release his anger. At this time, the main character was lying on the couch and in a drunken delirium thought that he was not satisfied to be just an ordinary person and he urgently needed to change. After that, he got up from his seat, left the room and told his friends to continue eating, and he, in turn, would go for the check. Thrusting his hand into his pocket, the young man discovered that his stash, which he hid for a rainy day, had been spent on booze and now he can only use the phone to get more money. However, when the main character turned on his phone, he found a notification on it that asked the guy if he wanted to open an application called Prefectural Circle of Friends. This confused the young man a little, because Green knew about such an application, but his phone had already installed it. At this time, the guy was walking forward and looking at the phone, and therefore did not notice that a beautiful girl was walking straight towards him. Because of this, the young man crashed into her and was even a little scared out of surprise. The girl fell to her knees on the floor from the blow, so Zhang hurried up to her and asked if she was okay. The girl did not turn around at first to answer the question, but the guy could hear that she was crying and even decided that it was because he crashed into her. Then the young man offered the girl to take her to the hospital. However, the next second she turned to the main character and with tears in her eyes said that bad people were chasing her and she really needed help. The girl began to beg the guy to take her out of this place. Jing was taken aback by such a request and did not even know how to react, because the girl was begging him for salvation right now. The young man mentally turned to himself and said that he was a man who was rejected by a girl and caused great pain, so now he must also refuse the girl since he can no longer have any relations with women. The main character convinced himself that he should reject this girl, however, apparently, his words did not sound too convincing, because the guy answered out loud that he would take the girl out of here without any problems and even carry her on himself. The young man decided that unfortunately he absolutely could not refuse the request of such a beautiful lady. In the end, after a while, the main character and the girl ended up in a hotel. They were both sitting on the bed, while the girl was falling asleep on the chaff of the young man, and he was thinking about the situation in which he found himself. The main character began to reflect that this situation was developing in a rather strange way, because he did not understand how it happened that they were hiding from some bad people in a hotel room. On top of everything else, the guy was very, very uncomfortable, because it turned out to be his first time alone with a girl. Jing realized that he needed to hurry up and figure out what to say to her. Then the young man awkwardly scratched his head and told the girl that they were safe now and if she wished, he could call the police. The guy thought that he was still a gentleman and therefore should act accordingly. However, upon hearing this, the girl said with fright that it was not worth calling the police in any case. Zheng obeyed her and decided that he would only do as she wanted. 
It so happened that the girl fell on the guy and dropped him on the floor and so they were lying on the floor and she was on top. At that moment, when the guy was very confused about what was happening, the girl asked him if he didn't like being here with her. The young man replied that this was not the case at all and he was just worried about the girl. In response, the fugitive told the main character not to call the police and not leave her because she still needs to do something. Zhang immediately understood what she meant and said that they should get to know each other better before doing such thing. In response, the girl naively said that they are getting acquainted right now. After these words, she took off the straps of the dress from her shoulders and was about to bare her breasts. Seeing this, the main character was in the strongest shock, but he was also very excited, so that blood gushed out of his nose with a strong pressure. The young man did not expect that everything would be so soon and straightforward and said that he had not prepared at all yet. In response, the girl told him not to talk and wait, because in a second she would do everything. The main character was in shock and only thought that this girl was just a lost sheep and was still looking for her way, so he could not leave her and had to take care of her. It was very hard for the guy to hold on and he thought that the girl should get to action as soon as possible, otherwise he would not stand it anymore. Suddenly, a crash was heard. Some men kicked down the door to the room and rushed inside. The guy and the girl turned towards the door and saw three men there, one of whom was holding a phone and filming it all on video. The main character gave them a menacing look and asked the girl if these were the people who were chasing her. Then he added that the girl could go first, and he would help her. As a result, the girl got up and calmly walked past the guys, and the young man remained standing in misunderstanding of what was happening. Nevertheless, after a second, the main character realized that the so-called fairy jump had happened to him. In response to this, one of the men said that it was all nonsense and Zhang had to sleep with his friend's sister. They filmed it all on video and now the guy owes them money for it. The second man laughed and added that if the young man did not pay, he would be beaten to death. Zhang thought that he knew that no one would be so lucky to be in a room with a beautiful girl, however, who knew that it would turn out to be the legendary fairy jump. Nevertheless, the guy was not afraid, because he knew that in front of him was a bunch of stupid gangsters and a young man could just easily call the police using his phone. When the gang leader asked the main character what he was trying to do, the guy replied by showing his phone that he had already called the police and it was better for the men to get away from him. At first, the men froze with fright on their faces, but then burst into laughter. Then the leader spoke up and said that the young man was crazy, because in fact he opened his circle of friends and did not call the police. The man also added that the guy keeps them all for fools in vain, because each of them has an initial bachelor's degree here. Hearing this, the main character was very surprised and at first did not understand what circle of friends the man was talking about. Then Zheng looked at his phone and found a notification on his screen that the prefectural circle of friends application had loaded by 70%. The main character decided that something was wrong with his phone, or he pressed the wrong button. However, there was no other way out. At that moment, the guy began to think about his fate. He realized that the app wasn't even supposed to open. And also, he spent all his money and now he will be beaten to death, after which he will go to hell to his seventh grandfather. The young man was crying, looking at the ceiling and thinking that his soul was about to soar to heaven. At that moment, the gang leader irritably asked the main character about why he was smiling so disgustingly and added that Zhang now owed them money, and the men would beat him until he came to his senses. At that moment, the second man with a bat attacked the young man shouting die and was going to hit him. The main character was scared and thought that he was not ready to die yet and therefore tried to protect himself with his own phone. It was when the bat touched the gadget screen that a bright light appeared, which blinded everyone present in the room. Then a sound came from the phone, which indicated that the prefectural circle of friends application was open. The bandits did not understand what was happening, but they could not do anything, because they were so blinded by the light from the gadget that they could not open their eyes and screamed in pain. The light grew brighter and brighter until it finally went out. Then the main character woke up and began to look around. He began to think about where this light came from and whether the phone could emit light of such brightness. Zheng came to the conclusion that this was impossible, even if it was not a phone screen, but a flashlight. After that, he started looking for the rest of the people who were in the room with him. To his surprise, the main character found that everyone else had fainted and was lying on the floor unconscious. Zheng was very happy about this news and began to laugh hysterically. The guy began to think about whether it was all his doing. Then he realized that it was not without the help of the same application from the phone. After that, the main character looked at the screen of his phone and found a message there. After reading the main character stood in shock and did not even know what to think. The guy decided that in ordinary life he did not believe in this or decided that he was acting in some kind of reality show, but now he had no other choice but to believe in what was happening. In the message, someone called Bull's Head greeted the main character, saying that the guy must be a beginner and not yet familiar with this application. Zheng at the same time thought that he had discovered something terrible. The main character's phone screen showed a message from the bull's head. 
It said that tomorrow is Kin Guang Wang Shu's birthday. The bull asked the young man about what kind of gift he was going to make. Looking at this notification, the young man thought that he had no idea what kind of bull it was and who had a birthday tomorrow. He also felt that he had encountered something that he should not have encountered at all. The guy stared blankly at the phone screen and absolutely did not know what to do. He only understood that this was really not a dream and was really happening. Suddenly, Zheng realized that he was still in the room with those bandits and decided that whatever it was, he had better hurry up and leave this place before the others woke up. The main character decided that even though the girl framed him, he would still take her and save her from this place. The guy started trying to load her innocent body on himself and realized that she was heavier than she seemed. The young man also thought that he should hurry up after all. In the end, when the young man finally hoisted the girl's body onto his shoulders, two men appeared in front of him, who ordered the main character to stand and not move. The guy was taken aback and decided that these were not the bandits again. However, then, lanterns began to shine in the face of the main character. The man introduced himself and said they were from the police. Jing put his hands up, smiled and told them that he was an innocent and anxious citizen. The next day, the main character and the girl left the police building. The lady shed tears from her face and thanked the guy for what he had done for her. She also added that despite the fact that she framed him, the young man still acted as a witness and helped her. The girl was very grateful to him for this. In response, Zheng smiled and said that there was nothing wrong with that. However, he still wondered why she was with the bandits and helped them do such things. In response to this question, the girl awkwardly kept silent and then looked away. After a few seconds, she still replied to the main character that she would like to discuss this another time and now she wants to go home. When the girl was already approaching the car, the guy shouted after her that his name was Zhang Kian and he was a medical university student, but the girl still hadn't told him what her name was. When nothing came in response, the guy burst into tears and said that unfortunately, apparently, he was destined to live alone for the rest of his life. At that moment, the main character heard a sound from his phone. It was a notification from the same application called Prefectural Circle of Friends. Someone who called Zheng a beginner. I introduced him as a brother and said that everyone wanted to pour on the birthday with a gift and he begged the main character to say something. Because he could not believe that the guy had not prepared anything at all. Rolling his eyes, the young man took out his phone and looked at the screen. He remembered that today was the birthday of some king of hell Kin Guang Wang. The young man thought that hiding is not the way out, and he can't throw away the phone either. He also remembered that he didn't even have a few cents left in his pocket, and therefore, he urgently needs to come up with some kind of plan for a gift. After a while, the main character still found what he needed. It was a small villa made of paper. The guy looked at her and decided that this is what he will give, because now it's the only thing he can afford. Then the guy wrote to Brother Bull that he would now send him a photo of the proposed gift in order for him to evaluate it and say whether it would fit. After looking at it, the Bull was very pleased and said that the big characters are very generous. He also added that he also wants to send this gift, but unfortunately he lost too much money in games. The young man thought that he could definitely rely on this and then they would send this particular gift. There was also a toy sports car next to the villa. The main character looked at her and decided that he could also give this. He asked the Bull what he thought about it adding that he still had a few cents on hand and could afford it. Seeing this, the bull was very pleased. At first he didn't even believe that such a thing was really possible. He also added that if his brother really does this, then first he will be very well thanked, and then they will add reputation to the bull himself for such a generous gift. In response, Zheng asked about how he would send such a gift. He also added that he did not know what kind of delivery could send anything to the underworld. In response, the bull said that the guy should just burn these gifts along with a piece of paper on which the bull's name would be written. Having received such an answer, the young man was a little surprised. He thought that this method is also good, but he does not even know what to say about these creatures. They are advanced or backward. However, Zheng decided not to load his head with such thoughts, because the sooner he could get it over with, the sooner he could leave and forget about it. After that, the young man turned to the seller and said that he wanted to buy this villa and a sports car, but he needed something inexpensive within $10. In response, the man said that he could do it without problems and everything would cost $9 with free shipping. This arrangement suited the main character and he bought a gift for the king of hell. At this time, in hell itself, two men were talking to each other. They were dressed well, like some big shots in this place. One of the men turned to the second one named Lao Kin and said that he had heard that there was a newcomer in the group. The man asked Lao if he knew who was supporting him. In response, Kin asked his friend if he remembered how the Tibetan Bodhisattva King said that he had accepted a new disciple before entering the sect. The man replied that he remembers it and also remembers that he called him novice. It also angered the man, because the Tibetan King Bodhisattva had not accepted new students for several years. So he was sure that this was a lie and there was no novice. Suddenly, a huge villa fell next to them. 
It was the one that the main character bought as a gift for the king of hell, but now it was of normal size in order to be able to live in it. This building just fell out of the sky and almost crushed two men. They barely managed to dodge at the last moment and were not injured, but they were still in shock. Lao looked at this villa and did not understand what it was and where it came from. Then the second man found a note nearby that said that this villa was sent by a novice and it just so happened that the birthday of the king of hell fell on the same day when the guy was accepted into the group. So he sent such a small congratulatory gift as respect. After looking at the villa, the man said that he was taking back all his words that he had just said and perhaps a really incredible newcomer had joined them. The next day, the main character was rushing headlong down the street somewhere. He was thinking that the interview was scheduled for 9 in the morning. And the time was already 8 hours and 40 minutes, but he still did not get a call from the company. The guy decided that he can't be late for his first day, especially when it's an interview, which means he has to come on time. Suddenly, the young man received a message on his phone. It said that he was awarded 1000 points in the WeChat application. The young man looked at it and was surprised, because he did not understand at all what kind of glasses he was talking about. However, after that, along with the notification came a message from Kin Guan Wang. In it, he said that he had received a gift from his recently joined immortal friend and was transferring a thousand points to him as a thank you. Realizing that in return for the gift, the King of Hell gave Zhang glasses, he began to doubt that the King of Action received exactly what the guy burned and therefore he decided to talk to the bull in order to make sure of it. At this time, the guy was still walking down the street and looking at the phone screen and therefore did not notice how the girl was walking towards him. The main character crashed into her and she fell to the ground accidentally lighting up her underwear. The young man immediately glanced at the girl's panties and noticed that they were pink, but then quickly apologized to her and asked her if she was okay. It turned out that the main character knew this girl, because he studied with her at the same school and her name was Lu Yu Lai. During the time when the girl ran into the guy, she accidentally kissed him on the cheek, leaving a trace of her lipstick there, so the main character was rather happy about this event and believed that he was lucky. Then the girl got up from the ground and told the main character that everything was fine with her and she did not blame the guy for what happened. She also added that in fact, the girl was just in a hurry and therefore did not notice the young man and crashed into him. At this time, all the people who were around the main character paid attention to Zhang because he not only crashed into the most beautiful girl of the school, but even managed to talk to her. All the guys were jealous of him and didn't understand why they couldn't either. In response to this, the other guy laughed and said that he was wrong to think that it was luck and also ridiculed him for running after this girl around the school in search of attention. At that moment, three guys appeared on the street. Then the guys began to speak more quietly, because they knew that something was wrong and they didn't want problems. But they were not easy to watch on the show, which was about to begin. Seeing three aggressive men, the main character was covered in sweat and a little scared. He thought that he was once again lucky and hoped that now he would be able to avoid a bad situation. One of these three aggressive guys was the son of the chairman of the group named Dong Fan Hong. He shouted at the main character, calling him a scumbag and said that he had the audacity to dismiss his hands in vain because he should know that Lu Yu Lai is his woman. He also added that he was going to beat the young man for this until he took off. At this time, the girl stood up for Zhang, saying that he had nothing to do with it because this guy was just an ordinary passerby who was walking by. Looking at this, the young man thought that he was certainly glad that the girl was standing up for him, but he was the main character here and had to cope on his own. Then the girl added with annoyance that she was already tired of repeating to this evil guy that she had no relationship with him. After that, Lu turned to the main character and told him to leave first, because it doesn't concern him in any way. The guy smiled and agreed with her, adding that he really needs to do something, namely go to an interview, so he will leave first. But as soon as Zheng turned around, two other aggressive men blocked his path. Behind them stood a third, the same Hong, who again turned to the young man and told him that he dared to touch his woman, which means he will not be able to get off so easily. He also angrily added that the main character will not be able to leave until he crawls out from under the guy's feet. The girl intervened in the conversation again and told Dong that he should not intimidate people like that. After looking at everything that was happening, the main character realized with sadness that he could forget about the interview and about leaving this disgusting place, because the girl would suffer if the guy just left now. After that, Zheng told the guys that he didn't want to cause them trouble, but they forced him. Hearing this, Donggu became even more angry and looked like some kind of madman. He told the main character that he thinks he is the main character, but in fact he wants to pretend to be him. He asked the young man to show what he was capable of. In response to this, the guy said that with what Dong said, he would turn around after he prepared. Then the guy laughed and said that it was stupid, but he would wait to see what Zheng decided to prepare. The main character realized that he could only find help from new friends and therefore took out his phone and began typing a message. The guy wrote to the bull's head that he urgently needed help. 
He also added that yesterday, with the help of light, Jing was able to finish several guys. For this reason, now the young man needs the bull to help and tell him how to get this light out in order to deal with someone. In response, the guy received nothing and waited. Jing was already getting nervous and mentally begging Lao Nui to answer him as soon as possible, because the guy had already been beaten earlier and did not want it to happen again. In response to this, the bull replied that no light would help if the guy wanted to hit someone. Then he asked Jing if he would like to receive Zhang Yu's divine power, because he is very fast and strong. Then the guy replied that if this power really helps him, then let the bull send it as soon as possible. In response, Lao Nui replied that it would cost 5,000 points and trade in the goods was not accepted. Also, the main character can pay for everything at once or take it in installments. Zhang immediately realized that the very points he had been given recently were the infernal currency. In response to the bull, the young man said that he immediately sent him 5,000 points just now. After that, Zhang Yue's divine power was activated and transferred into the main character's body. Seeing this, Zhang's three abusers laughed, and Dong said that the main character was again trying to play with him like a monkey. Then another man entered the dialogue, one of those who was among the offenders of the main character. He told Zhang that his young master Dong Fan didn't have much free time to spend with the main character, so he should just calmly accept his death. Liu Yulai also added that Ye Zheng should be more careful. The young man at this time was ready to attack. His eyes lit up red and he was furious. The next second, the guy punched one of Dong's subordinates in the face. The guy didn't even have time to dodge and flew off because of the impact right on the asphalt. At this time, a second man approached the main character, but Zheng also hit him without a miss. Both guys flew high into the sky, and everyone who watched the fight was shocked. It was a double murder. Dong stood with sweat on his forehead and looked at his friends in fear, because he knew that the same fate awaited him. The main character shouted to those guys that they were disgusting and got for daring to touch him divine. Then he turned to young Mr. Dong Fan and asked him if he wanted to play with the young man. He didn't answer anything, but he was already going to leave in fear, leaving this place. The students who were standing on the street and watching the fight began to whisper among themselves, discussing what was happening. No one could understand what had happened, but they knew for sure that Zhang had killed his opponents in the blink of an eye, which meant that he must be really very strong. At this time, the main character approached Lu Yulai and asked her with a grin about whether these two monkeys just looked very funny. The girl also smiled back and said that everything was really like that, and also added that Zhang looked just handsome. In response, the guy said that it was nothing special and this happens very often. However, in fact, inside, the main character was experiencing a storm of emotions. He was shocked that the main beauty of the school told him that he was very handsome. Zheng was so stunned by what was happening that he thought he was about to go to heaven because no girl had ever called him handsome before. The young man thought that he should be grateful to the prefectural circle of friends. Dong Fan ran away from this place in fear, only shouting at the last that the main character was just a brat and it was better for him to remember this day because then Dong made Zheng pay back for what he had done. The young man only looked after him with contempt and did not answer. However, at this time, Li Yulai snuggled up to him and said with admiration that she did not even think that her classmate was so good. In response to this, Zheng awkwardly smiled and said that it was nothing and if this guy dares to molest the girl again, then she can just find the main character and ask for help. Zheng also added that he has an interview soon and he should go as soon as possible. The guy waved goodbye to the girl and ran away, while she remained standing in place with bewilderment. Following the main character, she shouted that she still remembers the signs of the name of her classmate the savior. In response, the guy said that the girl could just call him king and no problem. However, he then stopped, turned around and added that his name was Zheng Kai. The girl was surprised, because the name of this guy sounded similar to the phrase making money. At first she thought that this name was pretty stupid, but then she decided that it was quite likely that a guy with that name could solve her problem. At that time, a notification came to Zheng's phone saying that the guy received 300 points for robbing the rich and giving it to the poor. After a while, Zheng still came to the interview at the hospital with his resume. There was a fat man sitting in the office, who didn't seem particularly interested in what was happening. He only told the main character to put his resume on the table and leave the room, and then waited for the man to call him again after a while. The main character did everything as he was told, but he was annoyed and angry because he realized that he could not rush so much and talk a little more with the school beauty. When Zheng left the office, he heard someone behind him recognize him as the loser of his class, Zheng Kain. It was a girl and she was also surprised that the main character came here for an interview. When the young man turned around, he saw that a guy with a girl named Wang Hao Ran and Yang Yun Yun were standing behind him. The guy approached the main character, put his hand on his shoulder and said that he could not worry about passing the interview. 
The thing is that this young man's uncle was the deputy chief physician of this hospital and considering that Zhang is a classmate of this guy, he said he could put in a good word for the main character. However, then the guy added that he could only do it if the main character begged for it on his knees. Zheng looked at Wang Hao Ran and thought that he dared to touch his woman, which angered the guy and now he decided that he would show him today what real power is. Zheng understood that Wang also wanted an internship at this hospital and therefore decided that he would do everything to ensure that he did not end up in this place. Then the main character pushed Van's hand off his shoulder and said that for him there was no need for someone to put in a good word for him, because he had good grades and he was sure that he would get an internship. In response to this, Wang said with irritation that when the time came, he would ask his uncle to make sure that the main character was taken to work in the morgue for half a year. Then the guy asked Zheng what he thought about it. Then a girl entered into the dialogue. She told Hao Ran that this loser Zheng definitely did not come for an interview, but only pursued the girl, because he had been running after her for half a year before and she even agreed to his courtship. But now Zhang, in her opinion, is sick and came to this place in order to get to the doctor. Hearing this, Wang laughed and said that he was a little surprised that such things happen. The main character also laughed in response. This infuriated Wang and he asked Zheng about why he was laughing calling the young man a brat again. In response to this, the main character was surprised to say that he did not even think that some people did not know that their girls were cuckolding them. Then he added that the thing was that Zheng had just remembered that Wang's girlfriend had stayed late with a fat man last night, and Wang probably didn't know that yet. In response to this, the guy said that it was nonsense and last night Yun Yun was at training, and Wang even talked to her on the phone, so he was sure that Zheng was lying. The girl also intervened in the conversation and said that she thinks that the main character has been alone for too long without a couple and therefore comes up with all this in order to separate her and Van. At this time, footsteps were heard in the corridor. The main character was approached from behind by the same girl whom he had previously saved from bandits. She hugged the guy by the shoulder and called him dear and asked why he was standing here and had just come. Because people have been waiting for him in another office for a long time. Zhang was a little surprised to see the girl here and realized that she was helping him, but he didn't show it. The guy just smiled at Wang and Yun Yun, apologized and said that this girl already has her own boyfriend. It's just that he doesn't often get to see such a large range of emotions from others. Then he laughed and said that he would leave with his girlfriend and would not distract the guys. Mentally, Zhang thought that he was dizzy from what he saw, because the girl was very beautiful. Also, the main character, like any other young man, could not resist the beautiful breasts of a girl and stared at her. Following the departing protagonist and the girl, Wang said with irritation that he did not understand why Zhang got the opportunity to walk with such a beautiful lady, while he could only afford to hang out with this second-rate girl. Hearing such words, Yun Yun got angry and asked the guy about what he was saying. In response to this, Wang irritably told the girl not to touch him because he had just confirmed his guesses. The fact is that yesterday the guy really called the girl when she was at training, but she did not answer him. He also noticed that Yun Yun's body smelled of cigarette smoke and was surprised by this, but did not know how to explain it. However, now it was clear to the guy that the girl was cheating on him with another. In addition to everything else, Van called the girl a whore and said that he was going to close the credit card he gave the girl yesterday today. Watch out. He told Yun Yun not to even dare to appear in front of him anymore. From such words, the girl burst into tears and began to curse Shang Kian for pursuing her. She also added that now he would not get rid of her so easily after everything he had done. At this time, the main character was walking down the corridor and talking to the same girl. She apologized and said that she accidentally overheard his conversation and decided to act as she saw fit. The girl then asked Zheng if she had caused him any trouble with her improvisation. The main character replied that everything was fine and said that he was grateful to the girl for helping him out. However, the guy was interested in why the girl was in the hospital. Zheng asked her if she was in any trouble again. Suddenly, the girl became sad and said that in fact, there were problems with her mother. It turns out that she accidentally caught a cold, but unfortunately this disease did not go away even after half a month. The girl also said that her mother's condition could worsen so much at any moment that she would need to be transferred to the intensive care unit. Upon hearing this, the main character enthusiastically said that he did not understand how it was possible not to cure such a cold and suggested that the girl must have met not with a doctor, but with a charlatan. Then Zheng said that he was also studying medicine and could help her mother recover and maybe then the girl would be able to live in peace. However, a few minutes later, the guy was standing in the ward and thought that it was all over for him because he just felt the pulse of the woman and found out that he didn't know anything about her condition at all. In fact, the main character just had a good feeling that he might know what happened to the woman. However, now the guy just stood in the ward and burned with shame. Despite this, Zheng still continued to examine the woman in order to try to find out what had happened to her. Suddenly, a doctor came into the room and indignantly asked what was going on here at all. 
He also added that the woman had already been examined and she was recovering, but the man was more interested in who the guy was. The doctor also angrily added that this young man was just a child and could not know anything about medicine. Moreover, some people may look like they are doctors and know how to treat, but in fact they have no intention of doing this and they just want to make money. The man began to suspect that Zheng was one of those. Then the man approached the girl and called her Miss Huang and said that she should still listen to the opinion of a medical professional. Also, the man will add with a smile that today he works the night shift and the girl could come to him in the evening so that they could discuss the details of the illness. It was clear from the doctor's face and intonation that in fact his intentions were unkind and he was just pestering the girl. After looking at everything that was happening, the main character thought that in this situation it would be a trifle for him to lose his job, but he could not allow this pig, that is, a doctor, to molest a girl. Then the guy, proudly raising his head, said that a professional doctor has been treating a woman for a very long time, but she still does not recover and there is no positive dynamics. For this reason, the young man said that he should be careful and he needed to think about it. Hiding behind such an excuse, the guy left the office and began to think about how he could get out of such an awkward situation. At first, Cheng decided that he should Google the woman's symptoms in order to find out what kind of disease it could be. However, then he immediately realized that everything they write on the internet is a lie and now that the guy had no other way out, he became very worried. Suddenly it dawned on the guy and he realized that he could ask a circle of friends about what was happening. Zhang decided that he could find the bull and ask him for help, because the beating technique that he had been given earlier was very useful and perhaps he could use something to heal people. The main character opened the application and wrote to his brother with a question about whether he knows any great doctor. The guy added that his friend was very ill and needed help. The bull replied that in order to cure the disease, the guy should just find a certain Lao Song, adding that he recommends his services. In response, the main character thanked Nui's brother and said that in that case he would return to work. Then the main character found the account of the same doctor in the application. It was the old man, the king of medicine song. In the description to his account, it was said that he was obsessed with fighting landowners and could not get rid of them. After Zhang wrote to this doctor, an automatic response followed. It said that he was asking the farmers not to disturb him. He also added that in order to buy a hereditary medicine, you need to go to a certain section and buy it for 10,000 points at once or in installments. Seeing this, the main character was very surprised that in this, there are so many celebrities in the so-called little app. However, after meeting Zhang Yu, the guy was not so surprised by what he saw. Then Zhang thought that he didn't know how many points he had left. But he immediately stopped and decided that he should forget about it, because saving a person's life is the most important thing. Immediately after that, the main character clicked on the buy button and purchased the medicine. The guy's head immediately received all the medical techniques that were passed on to him from the king of medicine. There were so many of them that the young man's brain could barely withstand such a load and almost exploded. However, after a while, the guy was able to pull himself together and came out to the girl and her mother with a smile. Zheng immediately said that in fact everything is very simple and understandable for a woman upset stomach and spleen, which were caused by wet heat. The guy also added that you only need to take 20 grams of rhubarb and let it boil in water until it becomes a decoction. Then it should be given to the patient and only one dose should be enough for a full recovery. Hearing this, the doctor got very angry and said that all this was nonsense and Zheng was talking some nonsense. Doctors will also add that the liver is a laxative and although the patient is swollen like a drum, there is no accumulation of food in her stomach. To everything else, the man added that a dose of 20 grams seriously exceeds the usual dose and a woman may not be able to withstand this. At the end, the doctor also angrily added that the guy was trying in vain to submit a resume to this hospital, given his level of knowledge and training. In response to this, the guy smiled and told the doctor that it was very bad that he could not see such a simple disease. The main character also said that with such qualifications, the doctor still dared to interview Zhang, because with the same success, the main character himself could have interviewed this man. These words made the doctor even more angry and even cursed. At that moment, another man came into the room and asked about why it was so noisy in the ward. It was the hospital director Mu Lao. The doctor's face and mood immediately changed. He began to smile and talk sweetly with the director. The doctor told Mu Lao that he was teaching this layman. That is, Zheng, who came here for an interview for some medical knowledge. However, the director ignored the doctor's words and immediately turned to the main character with a question about what he was saying and why he should abuse rhubarb. Hearing such a question, the young man hastened to answer it. The guy said that the patient's body is wet and cold, and the spleen and stomach are not working well. Zheng then added that a small amount of medicine will only keep the cold and heat in the body, and this causes an exacerbation of the disease. The guy also added that rhubarb can release both types of outdoor air, 
And as for excess, this is because the accumulation of food occurs in the intestines and at the same time only the stomach looks bad. It is for this reason that Zheng said it is not surprising that doctors cannot cure the disease. In response to this, the doctor laughed and asked Mu Lao about whether he hears what nonsense this child is talking. He also added that Zheng is just a student who has just graduated from university and he can't know anything about hot and cold air. In response, the director turned to Wang Yanming and asked him about how such scum like him appeared in this hospital. The doctor first heard the director's words incorrectly and decided that he called the main character a scumbag, but then was taken aback when he realized that the director had addressed him. Then he asked the director about why he said that. In response, the director angrily said that it was such a simple disease, but the doctor delayed it to such an extent that the patient already had to be sent to the intensive care unit. Then the director said that the doctor was now dismissed. He also added that all cases and diseases with which this doctor dealt should be examined again and diagnosed. Also, patients should contact the police immediately, because justice must return to them. The orderlies took the doctor by the hands and began to lead him out of the ward. Wang resisted and shouted to the director that he should listen to his explanations, but he did not listen to him. The doctor turned to Mu Lao and swore that he would not do it again and begged to give him another chance. The director didn't say anything. Mu Lao then turned to the nurse and told him to follow the instructions that Zheng said and cured this patient. Then the director turned to the main character and said that the interview would be too easy for him, so if he wants, he can follow him in order to diagnose other people after a while. The guy was surprised by such a proposal. He thought that he might become the first person in a Chinese hospital that Mu Lao knows. The young man realized that he could have a bright future. Therefore, Zheng decided that he would continue to be under the supervision of the king of medicine. Fan was standing in front of the door to the office and was nervous because he knew that his uncle had been fired. Of course, the guy didn't know why it happened and was thinking about who would interview him now and whether he would be able to get to work. When the guy entered the office, he first smiled and greeted the one who was sitting at the table. But then when he saw the one who would be interviewing him, his expression changed. The main character was sitting at the table. He looked at Wang with a sly grin and greeted him. The guy did not immediately understand what was going on and decided that the main character just went for an interview without waiting in line. Therefore, Wang began to attack Zheng for preventing him from getting a job. In response to this, the young man smiled condescendingly and then turned his badge so that it was visible what was written on it. Then Wang read that Zheng would be interviewing him. The guy was very surprised and could not understand how it happened that this guy suddenly became the boss so quickly. Wang even decided that the whole point was that Zheng's support and connections were stronger than his. After that, the guy immediately began to bow to Zhang and beg him to forget all the insults and quarrels that took place between them. The main character only nodded silently in response and smiled. Then he started talking and said that he was one of those people who separates personal life from work. He also added that in addition to not very good grades for studies, Van has a bad character and little merit. The main character asked the guy if he understands that his situation is not the best right now. In response, Wang smiled and said that Zheng was right in everything he said. However, in fact, inside, the guy was angry and very indignant about what was happening. He only thought that Zheng should never interfere with his plans for a career in this hospital. Suddenly, someone in the corridor shouted that he was ill and urgently needed a doctor. Hearing these screams, the main character without hesitation rushed into the corridor to help. There was a big and tall guy standing there with blood on his head and dirt on his jacket. Zheng approached him and asked him to calmly and slowly tell him what had happened to him in detail, adding that he was a doctor. In response to this, the man got angry and told the young man that he was a small child and was interfering with him, so he should quickly leave and call a doctor, and if he stayed late, the man would not spare him. At this time, a wheelchair appeared in the corridor on which the unconscious body of a young man was lying. There was an open fracture on his leg and a lot of blood was flowing. Seeing such a picture, Zheng was a little taken aback, but immediately realized that the victim's leg was broken. The nurse who brought the gurney told the main character to hurry up, because these guys are from Lin Shi's group, and the one lying on the stretcher is called Lin Tian and he is the chairman's son, so if the doctors postpone treatment, they may not be able to cope at all. The director of the hospital also came out to the noise in the corridor. At first he was frowning, but as soon as he saw the tall man, he immediately changed his tone to a kinder one and greeted young Mr. Mei. The doctor was surprised that the guy was in the hospital. However, in response to the director's goodwill, the man told him in an angry tone that he should stop talking nonsense and call the orthoptist Chen Liao as soon as possible. The man also added that he doesn't care what method the doctor uses, but he must definitely cure young Master Lin, otherwise the man will destroy this hospital. At this moment, the nurse intervened in the conversation. She said that Zheng Lao lives in the suburbs, and now it's peak time and it will take him at least two hours to get to the hospital. Hearing this, the man became very angry. 
He raised his hand and was about to hit the nurse with the words that this hospital is just a bunch of useless garbage. The girl had already screamed and was preparing to take the blow, when suddenly the main character grabbed the guy by the arm and stopped him. Zheng said that this is a hospital, not a place to behave wildly. The hospital director shouted and rudely addressed the main character, called him a trainee and said that he should hurry up and let go of young Master Meng's hand, because if something happens to him, Zheng himself will be responsible for it and he should not involve the hospital in it. Immediately after that, the young man let go of the guy's hand. Then he said that judging by the patient's condition, he would have to cut off his leg while they were waiting for Chen Lao's orthoptist, not to mention that the guy might die altogether. Therefore, the main character suggested that the doctors hurry up and listen to him in order to start the operation right now, because he has a way that can save the guy. Seeing that the director was inactive, the guy again shouted to him to hurry up and bring doctors, and also prepare the patient for surgery. In response to this, the doctor indignantly said that there could be no question of any operation, because an intern like Cheng could not know how to operate, but the guy was no longer listening to him. Cheng ordered the nurse to prepare Chinese acupuncture instruments and equipment for him, because he would definitely need to use it. The girl obeyed him, as she was inspired by the fact that he saved her and believed in the guy's abilities. At this time, the director continued talking and said that he thinks the main character is really crazy. He also added that if something happens to the patient, the guy will have to take responsibility for it, not to mention the hospital. The doctor ordered the guy to stay where he was and not go anywhere. In response to this, the main character got angry and told the director to shut his mouth and added that if something happened, he, Jing Kin, would exchange life for life. After that, the guy together with the nurse went to the operating room, and the director of the hospital and the young gentleman looked after him. Then the man irritably told the doctor to stop his bleeding as soon as possible, while insulting the doctor. The man came to his senses and began to help the guy. Some time later, the patient was in the operating room with a team of doctors and the main character. Jing was preparing for the operation and thought that even though it was the first time, when he operates on a living person, however, based on his experience and knowledge of the king of medicine, the young man was confident that he could help the patient. After that, the guy started the operation together with the acupuncture technique. Zheng was worried and was very focused, so beads of sweat appeared on his forehead. The guy wiped them off and thought that so far, everything is going pretty well, but it's all thanks to the king of medicine. The guy also thought that the skills of the king of medicine are really useful, because everything began to stabilize after Zhang inserted a non-yoke ring into the patient's meridians. Following the formula, the main character just had to choose the right method and then everything should work. At this time, the corridor of the emergency department was noisy again. The mother of the patient Po and his Li Wen shouted at the man who brought him to the hospital. The fact is that Mr. Meng wanted to take part in the project of the Lin family, but the woman assured the guy that if something happens to her son, she will not spare the guy and he may not even dream of the project and working with them. She also added that she was very angry at the fact that they really allowed an intern to operate on her son, so the woman swore that she would ruin the entire Meng group. In response to this, the man only apologized and said that he really shouldn't have brought young Master Lin with him. In response, the woman just continued to scream and said that she should level this hospital with the ground. Suddenly, a man named Lin Fu Cheng shouted at everyone to shut up, because the main character came out of the operating room. The woman immediately ran up to the guy with the words that if he was the same intern who operated on her son, then it was better for him to stay where he was, because if her son was in danger, then she would force Cheng to part with his life. The woman ran up to the young man, but he stopped her with a gesture, and then, taking off the mask, calmly said that his work here is over and if the woman really wants her son to be alright, then she just needs not to wipe the ointment off the guy's leg and everything will be fine. Then Zheng calmly walked past her and said that it was really very difficult to do the operation. However, fortunately, the doctor was qualified enough to do everything well and now he, that is, Zheng, needs rest. The woman only looked after the main character with anger, but did not say anything. After a while, she approached the director of the hospital, Lu Ming, and asked him about the health of her son. The man smiled back and told the lady that she could rest easy, because orthoptist Chen Lao has golden hands in this hospital, so young Master Lin will definitely be able to recover. At that moment, the doctor thought that the main character was really able to stabilize the patient's condition and this surprised him. But the director thought that Chen Lao had almost arrived at the hospital, so what would happen next was no longer his concern. Then the man entered the ward and saw the ointment on the patient's leg, the one that Zheng Kain did. Looking at her, the director of the hospital thought that he did not understand the origin of this ointment at all and was not sure whether the main character had disinfected the wound before applying the ointment to it. The doctor began to think that Zheng probably just put the wound on the ointment and therefore began to worry that infection might occur. 
Then the doctor took a rag and began to wipe the ointment from the patient's wound. At that moment, an orthoptist entered the room. He asked about the patient's condition, but the answer was not long in coming. The doctor himself immediately saw that the guy's condition began to deteriorate sharply and his life was in danger. Seeing this, the guy's mother became worried and began to call doctors for help. The woman stood by her son's bed and told the doctors that they had better hurry up and tell her what was happening to her son. At that moment, the guy's father spoke up and said that something was obviously wrong. The director of the hospital said that he absolutely does not understand how this could happen because recently the patient's condition was normal. At this time, the patient began to tremble and he was getting worse and worse. His mom got really angry and started saying that she thought that this hospital just wants to get as much money as possible and only then cure the guy. The woman added that she could solve this problem and said that she had $100,000 at her disposal if that was enough. Then she added that the doctors did not believe in vain that she would not be able to destroy this rundown hospital. In response, the orthoptist asked the woman if the same intern had said something to her when he passed by her. The woman replied that the guy had strictly ordered her not to wipe the ointment off her son's leg if she wanted him to be fine. In response, the man told the woman that he correctly guessed that it was the use of ointment and silver needles that helped save her son's life. He also added that unfortunately their hospital does not have such advanced technology and he is afraid that right now they are in an absolutely hopeless situation when nothing can help the guy. The woman immediately realized that the director had wiped the ointment from her son's leg. She approached him and called him a bastard and asked about why he did it. Then she grabbed him by the throat and began shouting that he was obliged to compensate for the damage to her son. At that moment, the nurse said that she had heard that Zheng Kayan had just left for school, which is very close from here. Hearing this, the boy's father decided that he would go to school with the main character, and those who remain in the ward should send him a photo of the patient. The woman replied that she would do as her husband said and save the director's life so that he would give her information. At this time, the main character was walking down the street and thought that in fact he had no way to avoid meeting with family members of his patients. However, Zhang decided that if such a meeting happened, he would teach them a good lesson. Suddenly, someone called Zhang Kayan and told him to come over. The young man turned around and saw Yun Yun there with her boyfriend, the same jock that beat the main character earlier. The guy told Zhang that he did not expect to see him here and was about to go to the hospital in order to find him. The main character turned around and thought with displeasure about why they got in his way again. The girl began to cry and complain to the man that this guy was looking at him from above and he came to this place in order to harass her again. But in fact, inside the girl was very angry and thought that she wanted to take revenge on Zhang Kayan for having divorced her and Wang. She also believed that even one beating to death would not be enough to teach the young man a lesson. At this time, hearing the complaints of his girlfriend, the man began to stretch his hands and told the main character that he had already been warned that he should not molest Yun Yun and now the man would beat him to death. The girl cut in and said that it was too cruel and the guy should just beat the main character until he becomes a cripple. In response to this, the young man smiled slyly and said that if the guy really thinks that Zhang is worthless, then he should come closer and check it out if he can. Suddenly a blue car appeared on the road. She drove at a huge speed and flew a millimeter away from the main character, almost knocking him down. At the last moment, the young man managed to dodge and thought that the one who is driving the car is probably completely crazy. Yun Yun and her boyfriend at this time thought that it seemed to them that the car was rushing straight at them. The girl asked her boyfriend if he would recognize the guys who got out of the car and also asked if they could be Zheng Kayan's assistants. The man replied that at first glance you can only say that this is a luxury sports car and a person in such a car could not come to the main character, which means he most likely came to the guy Yun Yun. The chairman of the Lin group named Lai Fu Cheng got out of the car, and concurrently the father of the guy who was injured in the hospital. Yun Yun recognized the man as the richest man in the city and asked her boyfriend if he really came here for him. In response to this, the guy said that apparently this is really the case and he should go and say hello to this man as soon as possible. The man did so, however, when he approached Lee, introduced himself and extended his hand to greet him, he was stopped by the gentleman's guard and told not to approach. At this time, the gentleman approached the main character, stood in front of him, bowed and apologized. The man added that he had come to the guy from the hospital specifically to apologize to him. Seeing such an influential person apologizing to Zhenim, Yun Yun and her boyfriend were horrified. The guys were shocked and decided that this uncle had just mixed up something. After hearing the man's apology, the young man did not immediately understand what had happened. He decided that the accident had happened after all, but then added that he had violated the rules anyway and he no longer had the slightest connection with this hospital. In response, the man said that he was ready to pay any amount of money for Zhang Kayan to agree to return to the hospital with him. In response to this, the main character said that some things cannot be solved with money alone and the man still does not respect the medical staff. The guy also added that since something happened to the man's son, 
He should just accept the fact that it was connected with fate and it was such trials and punishments that the Lord sent him. Then the man apologized again and said that he was too frivolous and he would definitely apologize to all the medical staff later. He then said that his son is now about the same age as Zhang, but he still hasn't lived his life properly. Usually, the man was very busy with his work and therefore he did not have time at all to take care of his son's upbringing properly. After these words, the man began to cry and beg Zhang to give the gentleman a chance to become a father to his son again. In response to this, the guy at first kept silent, because he was thinking about something, and then said that he agreed to the request of the gentleman, but he has one condition. The main character pointed his finger at Yan Yan and her boyfriend and said that these two guys are mentally ill and if the gentleman forces them to sing a certain song that time, then Zheng will go with him. Hearing this, the young guy was furious. He called Zheng a brat and said that he was talking nonsense and overreacting. Suddenly, aggressive people in black suits and glasses appeared in front of the guys. It was the master's guard. After seeing them, the guys realized that they had no choice and followed Zheng's order. While they were doing this in the center of the street, the young man got into the car and left for the hospital with the gentleman. He looked after his abusers and thought that I was learning from my mistakes. The guys could get better, and Zheng hoped that they would start life with a new one. After a while, the car delivered the gentleman and the main character to the door of the hospital. When they got out of the car, they were immediately met by the boy's mother. She was furious that Zheng had disappeared somewhere, while their son was very ill and on the verge of life and death. The woman was sure that the guy had no right to return to school while her son's illness had not yet been cured. She also added that if Zheng did not cure her son, she would turn him into a cripple. The woman did not have time to say a couple more words, as her husband hit her in the face with all his might, giving her a savory slap in the face. Along with that, he told her to shut up. Then the man began to tell her that, apparently, she had completely lost her morals since she was behaving like this. He also said that Zheng was just an intern doctor, and she didn't even thank him for saving her. The man asked his wife about what had exhausted his views that she had become like this. The woman quietly said in response that she was asking her husband for forgiveness and all this happened because she was very worried about her son's life. At this time, the main character intervened in the conversation and said that saving a person is the most important thing. Then the main character went to the hospital and continued to perform surgery on the patient. At this time, the gentleman told his wife and his friend that they had better not involve his son in these confusions about Zhang. Otherwise he would not show them any mercy. After some time, the operation was over. When the orthoptist and the main character left the ward, the doctor asked the guy about where he learned such a brilliant acupuncture technique, adding that it was incredible and excellent. Zheng smiled awkwardly and replied that she had been passed down to him from the ancestors of his family. At this time, a woman immediately ran up to them. She turned to Dr. Chen and Zheng with a question about what had become of her son. The main character replied that his life was saved and after three months of rest his leg should be as good as before. Hearing this, the woman burst into tears. She said it was wonderful news and thanked the doctors for saving her son. She also added that now she will treat the medical staff much better. Then the hospital director appeared. He turned to the doctors and said that their medical skills are at the highest level and this is some kind of miracle. In response, Yin said that Lu Ping reminded him of another problem that remained unresolved. The man asked the director if he had wiped the ointment off the guy's leg. In response to this, the director fell to the floor and began to bow. He said it was just a misunderstanding, because he was also worried about the patient's safety and begged the doctors to give him another chance. In response to this, the man only asked the hospital security to call the police, because something almost caused the death of the patient, and they also need to initiate a criminal case that needs investigation. When Lu Ping was taken out of the hospital, he screamed and tearfully asked Chen to give him another chance but no one would listen to him. After that, the boy's mother approached the main character and said that her husband had already also lectured her and she also realized her mistake. The woman once again apologized to Chen and said that she had $10 million, which she usually uses to buy cosmetics, but now she wants to give them to the young man as a thank you. The woman asked the guy not to give up the money. In response to this, the main character said that the doctors of their hospital treat in order to save people and not to earn money, so she should donate this money to the mountain region on behalf of Shang. In fact, the guy was suffering inside, because now he really needed this money. But he had to restrain himself, because now he should be promoted by the spirit of the doctor. Then the gentleman put the money in his pocket and said that he would give it to Dr. Lin in order for him to transfer it to the mountainous region. He also added that he still has a check for $500,000, and medicines are not cheap now, so he handed this person to the main character and told him to take it for the future. The guy thought that the amount is not too large, so he can accept it. In fact, he was very happy. At this time, the guy received a notification on his phone from the Prefectural Circle of Friends app. He was again given 10,000 points as a gift for being generous and saving a person's life. 
Then the guy decided that he would do good deeds and slowly repay his debts. Now Zhang happily thought that it was time for him to return. The main character was about to leave the hospital, when suddenly Van stopped him. The guy said that young Mr. Lin knows that Wang and Zheng are familiar and therefore asked him to give his business card to the main character. Hearing this, the guy was surprised, but he took the card. Wang then said that, to be honest, he wanted to teach Zheng a lesson, but today's series of operations made the guy change his mind. The young man was very happy, because the main character not only did an amazing and complex operation, but also allowed the guy to be interviewed. For this reason, Wang began to ask Jing to become his friend and give him a chance. Hearing this, the main character tensed up and asked Van if he was driving. The guy replied that he was driving. In response to this, the main character grinned and said that in this case they could try to be friends for a month. Having received such an answer, Van was delighted and the guys left the hospital together.